Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are absolutely racing towards summer of 2024 and the release date for the first Descendant. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the game in a series of videos to help you catch up since this has been one we've been talking about for a long time, going all the way back to Project Magnum. So this video is going to start with the main feature that this game brings to the table, and those are the Descendants. Now, these descendants are characters that you can unlock and play as, each with their own skills, stats, and unique playstyle. Some are better at certain roles than others, as always, so you will need to kind of be strategic with your resources to make the most out of each unlock. And yes, you will need to unlock them. Now, before we get to the unlock process, let's take a tour of each descendant really quick. Now, I just want to preface there are two additional descendants that will be added to the game at some point in time. The devs did confirm that. So this isn't the complete roster that we know of right now. Okay, so first is Lepic. So Lepic is your typical soldier character. He's going to specialize in grenades and comes with an arm launcher that can nuke and burn enemies. His passive trait gives him a special get out of jail free card if you take lethal damage. So it'll save your life, but it does have a long cooldown. Ajax is our tank. He's basically a void titan from Destiny. He can create shields to protect allies, and his passive allows him to accumulate void energy when he takes damage. Once his void energy hits a certain threshold, he consumes all of it to enhance his skills. Viesa is our frost mage. She can freeze enemies and control the battlefield. Her passive allows her to summon ice spheres that orbit and deal damage to nearby enemies, so when you need crowd control, Viesa is a very, very good bet. Freyna is a poison caster. She has lower shields and health than others, but she can quickly inflict high amount of damage to groups of enemies with her poisons. She also has a castable shield that offsets her low defense and gives you a little bit of stoutness when you need it. And lastly, her passive allows you to increase all damage to enemies afflicted with poison. Next, let's talk about Bunny, sort of the spokesperson or like poster child for this game. Bunny is essentially an energizer rabbit. She's built to be constantly in motion and all her skills require you to be. As you move, you generate electricity and this can be used to cast high damage skills. Her passive allows you to discharge electricity when you land after a double jump. Bunny has a pretty complex kit and requires a little getting used to, but she is a very high damage character. Sharon is a trickster assassin and her playstyle revolves around camouflage and ambushing enemies with electric attacks. She can deal large amounts of damage if the enemy is targeting another player, so if you're a rogue type of person, be sure to use that to your advantage. Now, if you like turrets, Jaber is for you. So he can summon a healing turret and a damage turret. His passive is a good one. So if you have both of your turrets summoned at once, which most of the time you probably do, he gets an extra damage increase. Blair is a fire specialized chef who excels at dealing damage over time. His passive increases his critical hit damage to burned enemies and his critical hit chance increases depending on the number of quote stoves that are deployed. Now stoves are AOE hotspots that will deal damage to nearby enemies and inflict them with burn. These are applied whenever you use certain skills. Glay is an interesting character, so she has minimal defense and low health, but her skills allow her to go berserk and siphon health from nearby enemies. Her playstyle is very Jekyll and Hyde, and you'll need to know when to berserk and when to return to normal in order to maximize her strengths. Now, if you love water and you love massive AoE damage, then Valby is right up your alley. She's going to deal range damage, she can place puddles to teleport between, and has a big skill called Laundry Bomb that'll pull in enemies and apply a debuff to them. Now, her passive reduces her mana consumption as long as she's standing in water, so that's a plus. Now, she isn't nearly as tough as her tanky counterparts, but she also isn't quite a glass cannon either. Kyle is a is one built for Magneto fans. Kyle's your guy. He can cast magnetic fields to block attacks. He can build a special resource called magnetic force that serves as a buffer before his health or shields are consumed. And he can also fly. So for those of you that liked Anthem back in the day, Kyle's probably gonna be your go-to. Then we have two ultimate versions of characters. We have the ultimate Lepic, which is basically Lepic with increased stats. To me, this is equivalent of like a prime Warframe. There is also a prime Viesa, who is incredibly similar to ultimate Lepic. Um, 
just has more firepower, same theme. So what I'm guessing here is we're going to see ultimates for a variety of these descendants that are coming out at regular intervals that'll most likely be tied to the battle pass. So that's who you can play as, but how do you actually unlock new ones behind the first three? So you're going to be able to choose from Ajax, Viesa, or Lepic if they keep the same tradition as the beta, but unlocking the other ones requires a process. And that's where we're going to have to go visit Xenia, who is the descendant research vendor. So for Warframe fans, this is going to seem very similar. Xenia allows you to research new characters as long as you have the correct materials. Now, during the beta, a new hero took about eight hours to research and unlock, though you could use premium currency to speed up that unlock process, which you're probably asking, where can I get all of the different materials needed to unlock these descendants? So there are a few places you can get them. You can buy them directly with premium currency, um, according to the beta, or you can farm their materials from boss fights. Okay, so I've talked about premium currency a little bit. Um, so let's dive into that really quickly. So the first Descendant, like I mentioned, is a free-to-play game from Nexon. These are the folks behind MapleStory, Vindictus, and countless other free-to-play games. And all of these have no barrier to entry, but they are equipped with cash shops full of different things for you to buy. So don't get it twisted, right? This game will have some form of purchable items. We know there's a battle pass. But looking at Nexon's history, I'm guessing the first Descendant is going to fall into the pay for convenience side of things. This is where you can spend like your real world money to speed up unlocks, progression, things like that. Um, Maple story though, at the same time, according to players, you can just buy your way to the top. So there is a chance that the first descendant heads in that direction as well. We just need to know and see more. Right now, we just have everything we've seen in betas and those are really just kind of test pools for, hey, how does this work? Do the players gravitate towards something or do they not gravitate towards something? And to me, if they go the pay for power thing in a looter shooter these days, that's gonna be an absolute death sentence. So those are the heroes, that's how to unlock them, and that's sort of a quick look at the premium currency and how to get it. In the next video, I wanna talk about loot, the events and different boss fights that we'll have access to. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time.